Hello, and thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. My name is Sylvia Black, licensed real estate broker and owner of Affordable Homes and Apartments in Williamsville. I'm also licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. I have my master's degree in sacred theological divinity, and I am licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. I said that, and I'm soon to have my PhD in Bible studies. And I want to thank you for joining me today again for Real Estate Religion and You where I talk about the books that I have written and I built a show around it. Well today, uh, we interrupt this regular pro scheduled program for a news broadcast. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> so how's everybody out there doing today? Uh, I want I, I got a joke I want to tell you. I don't know if you're going to find it funny or not. These two guys, one guy was going to, uh, he was going to end it, right? Because the, the problems had gotten so uh, terrible for him. He was just in such a... Um, you know, in a mess, in a bind, you know, and he was about to jump. And one man stopped him and he said, no, 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 don't jump, sir. Let's talk about it. Let's talk it over. See, maybe, you know, see if I can help. He talked to the man, and after he told him what happened, what was bothering him, they both jumped. <laughs> okay. Hit me up or uh, email me if you found that funny, sblack3001 at gmail.com. Oh, yes. You can also visit my YouTube address for free videos at sblack3001 on youtube.com. Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook, Dr. Sylvia Black. And uh, for information on my religious books, you can go to uh, highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Everything's spelled out. And for all your real estate needs, which includes property management, sales, and rentals, okay, um, affordablehomesandapartments.com. And again, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. Today I want to talk about a series of books that I had worked on and I find exciting. And they're entitled Bible Warrior Series. Now this is the video. Uh, probably won't have all of those uh, little books that's all around it. This is Bible Warrior Series Collection. And this is a video, a promo video about it. Which is what you're watching. Now this consists of 10 warrior series out of the Bible, directly out of the Bible. I chose 10 uh, warriors, because uh, now Jesus wasn't a warrior, he was more of a prophet, right? And the first one I come up with is Bible warrior series, and Samson is number one. Now there's no reason, I guess, uh, symmetrically why I chose them numerically. Uh, you know, perhaps maybe there is some logic to it. I didn't choose them. God chose them, okay? He's the one who directed me and told me how to put them together. Now, this is the story of Samson. Okay, this is volume one. It's called Bible Warriors Series One, Samson. And this is available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Okay, highwaytoheavenchurch.net. And I think this is this is the, the number two in cover. There's one cover that I like better than this, and when I get to that volume, I'll show you. Now, just to let you know a little bit about who Samson was. Okay, and of course I get my, my from the New Living's Translation. Okay, I have my summary in the back and questions and answers. So this is this could be considered actually an excellent, uh, uh, matter of fact, that's what I was going to put together. Um, well, I'll tell you about that later. But um, let's go on and talk about a little bit about Samson. Okay, now everybody loves the story of a hero. I know you do because I do. Now Samson grew up to, uh, to be an exceptionally strong man. But he was never what they call a gentle giant. Uh, he would not nego re uh, negotiate with an enemy when there was a chance of fighting instead. Okay, Samson killed 30 Philistines in Ashkelon to revenge himself on the Philistine men who bribed his wife to obtain the answer of the riddle. Samson used the jawbone of an ass as an unplanned club creativeness and the initiative were especially valued by the Jewish tribes. The Jewish tribes were forbidden by the Philistines to work metal, and so were unable to produce metal weapons. Okay, uh, this was clearly a disadvantage when fighting an enemy. Anyone who could get around this problem uh, by inventing a difficult way of fighting, such as guerrilla warfare, okay, or an efficient non-metal non weapon, as Samson did, was clearly an asset to the tribes. Okay, in other words, guerrilla warfare, they just come in at you, just bam, I'm coming in at you all from all sides. I'm not going to use my, I'm not going to come at with no skill, since they didn't have any, they couldn't weapon, so they had to come and fight you man to man with, you, with their hands. 
You know, they had to fight you mano mano y mano. One on one. Samson was a big man. He wasn't nine foot to be exact. And he wasn't coming gently either. You can hear him walking from a distance. Okay, Samson was a big man. And he had a big mouth to match. And that's what started the whole thing with the Philistines when it interfered with his first wife. Uh, you know, and then uh, that's why he ended up choosing Delilah, um, who was actually a Philistine, and then now uh, she's working for them. You know, now eventually you figure Samson would have got the message. There's a lesson that we can learn in this uh, for all of us who have relationships that are and perhaps may not be going well. Um, a woman comes to you and asks you, um, Where lies your strength, um, Samson? <laughs> Okay. Okay, one day uh, Samson went. To, okay, when? Okay, that's not. Uh, let's go to the. I want to get. Uh, okay, Samson died. Now, sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Serek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Uh, then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what it would take to tie you up securely. Now, first of all, the question is going to be, Woman, why you want to tie me up? I ain't into that kinky stuff. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, don't tie me up. I don't want to be tied up. Let me tie you up. You know? Okay, and so uh, Samson replied, if I were tied up with seven uh, new bowstrings that have not yet been dread, I would become weak as anyone else. He could have used that statement to his advantage if he was smart. Here's Delilah asking him, what, what's the secret of your strength that can cause you to be tied up securely? And he could have used that event for himself so he can get something out of her. He said, if you do this for me, if you do this for me, then I'll be as weak as any man. You know, and then he could have got something from her. If he would, he wasn't thinking though. So he told her a lie, right? And I think this is, you know, this has a lot to do with relationships. Because if we were a little bit more smarter in the people that we picked, you know, and then we complain about the, the relationships that we get into, you know. And then my suggestion, of course, to you as well as to myself, don't pick a fool. Okay? Don't look next to you yet. You know, wait till you get home and then holler at a sister. <laughs> okay? Now... Uh, so the Philistine rulers brought Delilah's seven new bowstrings, and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house, and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the beads as a piece of string snaps when it, um, when it is burnt by a fire. So the secret of restraint was not discovered. After Delilah said to him, You have been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. The reason why Samson had started lying to her in the first place because she was pressing him daily. How many of y'all know you got some nagging wives and some nagging husbands or some nagging boyfriends and girlfriends? You know what I mean? Just nagging all of the time, trying to get something out of you. So you figure, oh, I can just give her any kind of answer and shut him up. Uh, but what did it get Samson? He got his eyes gouged out. He did have one final victory, though, and you can find that right here in my... In the Bible Warrior Series 1, Samson, available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Now I'm going to have to move a little quicker. Uh, Bible Warrior Series 2 is Joshua. Uh, I know y'all all heard that song. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Okay, that was what he was most famous for. Okay. Now... Joshua shows awesome powers and ability with only minimal assistance from the Israelite soldiers. Okay, almost all the great uh, victories of that time are created, uh, accredited to him. Okay, though many of the battles uh, were probably uh, conducted by others. Instead of a sweeping conquest, Israelite, Israel's settlement of the land was a more complicated process. Nevertheless, the glory was Joshua's. He is best known for his extraordinary victory over Jericho, where the walls came tumbling down. Though the real uh, hero of the story is Joshua's God, who shows awesome power with only minimal assistance from the Israelite soldiers. 
You can share this uh, uh, story with the entire family. Have loads of fun. Relive it over and over again. Joshua's victories. Relive how he victory, how the walls came tumbling down. Visualize it in your mind. Walls coming tumbling down in your life. The walls of poverty coming down. The walls of uh, mess and stuff and junk. Okay? And just walls, just, you know, walls just coming down and tumbling down. Just think of that. Joshua, you know, fit the battle of Jericho. Let's fight some battles. You know, we got some battles over here to fight. Let's fight them. Let's fight the good fight of faith like Joshua did. It was, wasn't credited necessarily to Joshua. It was credited to his God. His God gave him the ability to do it, but he trusted in the God who gave him the ability in the first place. And it wasn't, they didn't, even, they didn't use no muscles when it came time to getting those business walls down. You'd be surprised if you really want to know what the wall, how the walls came tumbling down. They didn't chop them down. They didn't blow the walls up. They didn't ram nothing into it and knock the walls down. It was very unique how, they, how those walls came tumbling down. And not a hand had touched the wall when it came down. Come on now, that can't be nothing but God. Okay, now this is Bible Warriors Series 2, Joshua Baby, available on HighwayToHeavenChurch.net. Next we have Bible Warrior Joshua uh, Series 3, Judah. Uh, Judah was a bad member, Gemma. Available on Highway to Heaven Church, yet not net, y'all. Okay. After the death of Joshua, uh, the Israelites asked the Lord, which tribe should go first to attack the Canaanites? A lot of fighting was going on in the Bible, baby. A lot of fighting. The Lord answered, Judah, for I have given them victory over the land. The men of Judah uh, said to their relatives from the tribe of Simeon, Join with us to fight against the Canaanites living in the territory allotted to us. Then we will help you conquer your territory. So the men of Simeon went with Judah. When the men of Judah attacked, the Lord gave them victory over the Canaanites and the Pezites. And they killed 10,000 enemy warriors at the town of Bezek. Killed 10,000 of them, boy. That's a whole, uh, 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 whole village. You know what I mean? Or whatever. While at Bezek, they encountered King Adani Bezek. And fought against him. And the Canaanites and the Pesites uh, were defeated. Okay? You can't get that kind of victory, you know, fighting it with the guns and knives and harsh words, baby. You can only get that kind of victory knowing the Lord for yourself. Can I get some help up in here? Okay? And uh, the Ananites. Okay, but the Israelites soon captured him and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. <laughs> They cut off his thumbs and his big toes. I don't, I don't know what it says in the Bible. I guess there was some significance to it. There are ten of these that I have put together. They're ready and available right now on HighwaydeHeavenChurch.net. And on Lulu.com. You can go to Lulu.com. Type in my name, Sylvia Black. Um, and uh, Or maybe Highway to Heaven. If you type that in, then you might be able to get to me. I don't know. Now this next one I'm going to show you is one of the prettiest covers that I think is race number one. The first one I showed you rated number two, and this is number four, Gideon, Bible Warrior Series 4, Gideon, the story of Gideon. Now Gideon has a significance in his life. He was victorious, okay? Uh, everybody loves the story of a hero, like I said. Okay, everybody loves the story of a hero, and one with a happy ending especially. Okay. Um, okay. Now these Bible Warriors series provide you with just that. Now Gideon, on the other hand, chose men who drank from a stream by lying full length and lapping at the water. It's like a dog, you know. Can you imagine somebody laying down flat, just licking the water? Okay. Uh, and uh, thus offering the enemy a reduced target. How many of y'all know the enemy is a reduced target? Okay, he ain't that smart upstairs. All his, his elevators don't stop at every floor. Come on, come on now. Okay, Gideon developed the strategy of guerrilla warfare. Sort of like Samson, huh? Sort of like one of Samson's moves. Uh, and, and it was to be the Israelites' chosen method of fighting for many, many centuries. Okay, sometimes you just got to go after what you want, baby. You just got to fight. Fight the fight of faith. Fight that good fight, baby. You just got to start going to battle. Close that door, baby. Get on your knees and start fighting. Fighting those from the spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms, baby. Get rid of them. Cast them out. You know what I mean? Rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Some do them. Okay? Uh, now, he was Israelite's fourth judge in the time between 
the death of Joshua and the beginning of the monarchy, a judge at that time was not a legal official. It was just somebody in charge, I guess, you know, somebody to say they had somebody, you know. Uh, but someone who was filled with the Spirit of God and led military campaigns to defeat Israel's enemies. Okay, he led it. You know, he led the military uh, campaigns. You know I mean? He was the orchestrator of it, the facilitator of it. Okay, to defeat the enemies. Okay, he, 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 he systematically, you know, strategically, uh, you know, chose uh, ways of attacking. Okay, campaigns, you know what I mean? And write it down on paper. Okay, now with an army of 300 men chosen from a much larger group of a series of tests, Gideon attacked the Midianite camp at night, panicked, and then rerouted them. The Midianite uh, leaders were captured and beheaded. That is interesting, and there's more to the story than that. And it's found in my book, Bible Warrior Series 4, Gideon. Taken from the New Living Translation. It's very comprehensive and very interesting. Series 5 is about Omri and Ahab. Anybody know about Omri and Ahab? You know who Omri or Ahab was? Have you heard of Zimri? Do you know who he was? Well, you can find out who they are right here in Bible Warriors Series 5, Omri and Ahab. And I'll give you a little synopsis. Everybody loves the story of a hero, okay? Omri was one of the great military commanders of the ancient world. He allowed his subjects to worship whatever god they chose. He was a strong military commander who made a play for the throne after the precious king, Zimri, was killed. Amri was Ahab's father. When Amri died, he was uh, burnt in Samaria. Then his son, Ahab, became uh, the next king. 